This is my trigonometry course. Today we're going to continue to explore the six basic trigonometric functions. If you haven't done the homework completely incorrectly from the last class, do that homework before watching this video. In the previous class, you were given a ratio that uh, a trigonometric function is equal to, and you were asked to find the measure of the angle that uh, that ratio corresponds to. So let's do a practice problem. Cosine theta is equal to negative one half. We're going to review what we did in the previous class. We recognize that ratio. Cosine theta, if it's equal to negative one half, we could also write that as negative x over 2x and these expressions seem familiar so those correspond to a 30 60 90 degree triangle and if this ratio is equal to the cosine function then that means that this side is the adjacent side which means that the reference angle that we need is 60 degrees so then we consider four triangles that all have reference angles of 60 degrees. These 60 degree reference angles. And we ask ourselves which one of these triangles, there's actually two of them, there's two triangles that will give us a negative cosine ratio. So if you divide the yellow adjacent sides by the green hypotenuse in each triangle, which one of these scenarios will give you a negative one half? We need negative one half up here. If you divide the yellow by the green, you need a negative number. So which one of these triangles gives us a negative number if we divide the yellow length by the green length? And if you said quadrant 2 and quadrant 3, these answers here, you're correct. So one of the answers is this angle here. So we need to figure out what that angle is. Well, we know the reference angle is 60. So a complete rotation is 180. If you subtract 60 from 180, you get the angle measure we're looking for, 120. And the other example where this works is this red angle here. In order to find that, you have to add 180 degrees and 60 degrees, which is 240. So those are the two answers. So these are the types of problems that we did in the previous class. But the problems that we're going to do now are a little bit different. Because in the previous problems that we did in the, the previous class, we were asked to find the values of theta between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. So the answers for our problems would have been, and this particular problem would have been 120 and 240. But now we're asked to find all of the values of theta. Oh, what does that mean, all of the values? Well, 120 degrees is a solution to this equation. If you plug in 120, you'll get negative 1 half. But what if you rotate around and come back to the same terminal side there? So let's start at 120 and rotate 360 degrees until we get right back to where we started that is a coterminal angle. So in that case, it would be 360 plus 120 is 480. If we plug in 480, we'll get negative 1 half also. So 480 is also a solution. And the reason it's a solution is because if you rotate all the way around and then stop at the same uh, position, then you'll have the same triangle and the same quadrant. 
not only that, but you can add 360 again. If you add 360 to 480, you get 840 degrees. So you can rotate again, and you get the same triangle, the same reference angle. The triangle is in the same quadrant. And so if you plug in 840, you'll get negative 1 half. And you can just keep plugging in values. Just rotate 360 degrees. Keep adding 360, add it again, and add again, and add again. And there's just an infinite number of angle measures that will work in this equation. Also, you can rotate in the negative direction. If you start at 120 and then rotate 360 degrees clockwise, then uh, you'll get whatever 120 minus 360 is. So that would be negative uh, 240. So if you plug in negative 240, again, you'll get negative 1 half. And if you subtract 360 again, and then again, and then again, you'll just keep uh, producing more coterminal angles that will give you a negative 1 half value if you plug in the angle measure. So there's an infinite number of uh, solutions to this equation, and they're asking you to find all values. So how do we do this? Well, we take one of these angles that is a solution, 120 in the second quadrant, and we say theta is equal to 120, but we're going to add multiples of 360. And we're going to write a comma and say n is any integer. Now, integers are whole numbers. They can be negative numbers or positive numbers, or they can be 0. Now, those uh, answers represent the the uh, the angles in the second quadrant. Those are all coterminal angles in the second quadrant. But we also have solutions in the third quadrant. So now we have to write another equation. We have to say theta is equal to 240, but we can add multiples of 360 there also. So if you plug in negative whole numbers or positive whole numbers or 0 for n, you will get an angle uh, that can be plugged into this equation so that it'll produce negative one half. So these are the solutions to this particular problem. We found all of the solutions. These expressions represent all of the solutions. And we do need two different equations. One equation, again, represents the coterminal angles in the second quadrant, and the other equation represents coterminal angles in the third quadrant. So let's do a couple more of these before you try one on your own. So we're told that cosecant theta is equal to root 2, but we can write that as root 2 over 1 and then we can write it as x root 2 over x. And we see, we can recognize that this is a, a ratio produced by a special right triangle, a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. And so we can write four triangles, one in each quadrant, and our reference angle has to be 40 to 45 degrees because again it corresponds to a 45 45 90 degree triangle so now we ask if you divide the green hypotenuse side by the blue opposite side because cosecant is defined as the hypotenuse divided by the side opposite the reference angle if you divide the green by the blue, in which of these four triangles do you get a positive number, a positive root 2? Because we need a positive root 2. So if you divide the green number by the blue, if you divide the green length by the blue length, which one of these triangles will give you a positive number? If you divide the green hypotenuse length by the blue 
length, which one will give you a positive number? If you said quadrant 1 and quadrant 2, then you're correct. So let me uh, let me circle these, and I'm going to circle the ones that worked over here too. Okay, so we're going to use those to help us understand the answers. So. Now we have to figure out what these angles are. If that's a 45 degree reference angle, then subtract 45 from 180, and we see one solution is 135, and the other solution is simply 45 degrees. That's in the first quadrant. Remember, when you're in the first quadrant, the reference angle is equal to the actual angle. So now we write two equations. We write 45 degrees plus 360n n is any integer so that's one solution or that that's actually all of the solutions in the first quadrant that represents all the coterminal angles in the first quadrant now we write 135 plus 360n n is any integer. So again, this represents all the solutions. And you may wonder if we have to write degree symbols. Um, I'm not going to make you do that in these problems. So Again, the first equation represents all the coterminal angles in the first quadrant, and the second solution represents the second equation represents all the coterminal angles in the second quadrant. So what that means is if you plug in any of those angles into this cosecant function, they'll all give you a positive root 2. So again, the problem is asking for all of the values that work, every single one. So now, Let's try one more of these problems before you try one on your own. So we're told that secant theta is equal to 2 over root 3, which we can write as 2 over x root 3, or 2x over x root 3. And we recognize this as a special uh, ratio corresponding to a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. And it says that uh, secant is defined as the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side. So this side is adjacent to the angle in question, or the reference angle. So the reference angle is 30 degrees. So we draw that triangle in all four quadrants. And we ask ourselves, if you divide the green hypotenuse, because secant is defined by, is de, is defined by the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side. So if you divide the green hypotenuse by the yellow adjacent side, which one of these triangles will give you a positive number, positive 2 over root 3? If you divide the green length by the yellow length in the triangles, uh, what what uh, scenario will give you a positive number. And if you said the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant, you're correct. These here. So let's circle those. These are going to help us find our solutions. So one solution is 30 degrees. Uh, theta is equal to 30 degrees, but remember we have to include all the coterminal angles also. And the other angle is in the fourth quadrant. 
uh, that's going to be 330 degrees. Again, a complete rotation, 360 minus the reference angle, which is 30. So the, this equation represents all the angles, the coterminal angles in the uh, first quadrant. And this equation represents all the coterminal angles in the fourth quadrant. So those are our answers. OK, so I want you to take a picture of these problems and these problems here. And I want you to do number four. So you're looking for theta, all the values of theta that make the, the sine function equal to negative 1 half. There's an infinite number of them. So I want you to start by recognizing that this is a special ratio. And you need to identify the reference angle. And then consider those four triangles uh, that have the same reference angle. So try number four. When you come back, we'll do it together. OK, we're back. So the side opposite the reference angle is x, which means that the reference angle is 30 degrees. So we draw four triangles, and we ask ourselves, if we divide the blue opposite side by the green hypotenuse, which one of these scenarios will give us a negative 1 half? We need a negative number. If we divide the blue length by the green length, which triangle will give us a negative number, negative 1 half? And if you said, quadrant 3 and quadrant 4, you're correct. So these are the answers, the ones at the bottom here. So that's because the uh, these opposite sides of the reference angles, they're negative, right? Those opposite sides are negative. OK, so now we need to figure out the solutions. So here we just add 30 to 180, and we get 210 degrees. And over here, we just subtract 30 from 360, and we get 330 degrees. So now we have to create our two equations. Theta can be equal to 210 plus 360 n. n is any integer. And you're probably wondering, do I have to write any integer every time? And the answer is yes, you do. So those are the solutions. If you got that right, perfect. OK, so go ahead and try number five. And when you come back, we'll do it together. OK, we're back. So we're told that cosine theta is equal to 1 over root 2, which we can write as x over x root 2. And then we see that this ratio is familiar. It corresponds to a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. So the reference angle is 45 degrees. We can consider four scenarios, a quadrant 1, triangle, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4 triangle. Uh, and we want the ratio of the adjacent side and the hypotenuse to be a positive 1 over root 2. So we need a positive number. So if you divide the yellow 
side that's adjacent to the reference angle by the green hypotenuse length, the yellow length divided by the green length, which one of these triangles will give you a positive number, positive 1 over root 2? If you said um, quadrant 1 and quadrant 4, you're correct. So these are going to be our answers. They're going to help us find our answers, these reference triangles. So in quadrant 1, the reference angle is 45. That's the actual angle. And here, we're going to subtract 45 from 360, and we get 315 degrees. So the solutions in the first quadrant are 45 plus 360n. And the solutions in the fourth quadrant are 315 plus 360n. And of course, n is any integer. So if you got that one right, good. So let's go to the next problem. Okay, go ahead and try number six. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So we're told that secant theta is equal to negative 2, which can be written as 2 over negative 1, which can be written as 2x over negative x. So we recognize this as the ratio of sides in a special triangle. And secant is defined to be the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side. So if this is the adjacent side, then the reference angle we're looking for is 60 degrees. So we draw four hypothetical triangles, one in each quadrant, and the reference angle is 60 degrees. And we ask ourselves, if we divide the green hypotenuse, the length of the hypotenuse, by the length of the yellow adjacent side, which one of these triangles will give us a negative 2? secant is equal to negative 2. So when we divide the green hypotenuse length by the yellow adjacent side to the reference angle, uh, which one of these triangles gives us a negative number? And if you said quadrant 2 and quadrant 3, you're correct. So what is this angle? Uh, 180 minus 60 is 120 degrees. And 180 plus 60 is 240 degrees. So our answers are 120 plus 360n and 240 plus 360n. n is any integer. So if you got that one right, Perfect. Okay. So now we're going to solve problems that involve the tangent function. And something a little different is going to happen with these problems. If tangent theta is equal to 1, we can write that as 1 over 1. And we can also write it as x over x. The uh, the tangent function is defined as the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And if the opposite side of a right triangle and the adjacent side are equal, that means it's a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. So we can write all of our triangles, our uh, hypothetical triangles, and we need to ask ourselves if we divide the blue opposite side length opposite to the reference angle by the yellow adjacent side length adjacent to the reference angle. So if we divide the blue side length by the yellow side length, 
which one of these triangles is going to give us a positive number, positive 1. If you divide the blue side length by the yellow side length, which triangle is going to give us a positive number? And if you said the triangle in quadrant 1 at the upper right and the triangle in quadrant 3 at the lower left, you're correct. So in quadrant 1, the reference angle is 45 degrees. The actual angle is 45 degrees. So we can say that theta is equal to 45 plus 360m. And this angle here is 180 plus 45, which is 225 degrees. So we can say theta is equal to 225 plus 360n and n is any integer and so on and so forth. But it turns out that we can actually combine these equations into one and that's what's different about uh, solving these equations when tangent or cotangent is the function in the equation we can combine these two equations to one. And let me explain why that is. You can see that uh, the angles that represent the solutions to this equation up here are in quadrant one and quadrant three. But if you take this graph and superimpose it on the other graph, look what happens. Let me get a little closer. It seems like the purple, the purple lines, the hypotenuse of each triangle, they seem to make up a line. So that's a straight line going across. So if we get rid of the y-axis, Let's get rid of this y-axis and we'll just make it kind of a faded yellow for now. And we draw the triangle in the uh, first quadrant and the triangle in the third quadrant. We can see that this appears to be a line. And let's go ahead and get rid of the y-axis. So we know that this angle measure is 45 degrees and this angle measure is also 45 and using basic arithmetic we know this angle is 135 degrees because these two angles make a, a linear pair uh, because the x-axis obviously is a straight line but it's important to consider that these two angles form a linear pair also. They add up to 180 degrees. So if you start with your 45, 45, 90 degree triangle in the first quadrant, and then you uh, add 180 degrees, you create your 45, 45, 90 degree triangle in the third quadrant. And if you add 180 degrees again, you go back to your 45, 45, 90 degree triangle in the first quadrant. So instead of starting in the first quadrant and then adding 360 to get back to the first quadrant, we can just go back and forth between the first and third quadrants by adding or subtracting 180 degrees. If we subtract 180 degrees, we just go in the opposite direction. But again, it takes us from the first to the third quadrant. So what this means again is instead of adding 360 or subtracting 360 to uh, describe all of the solutions to the equation we can simply add or subtract 180 and that describes all of the solutions of the equation the angle measures that are solutions to the equation by going back and forth between the first and third quadrant so we can combine the two equations into one. We can start with any angle we want. We can start with 225 or we can start with 45. We can even start with a negative angle if we want. But let's just start with 45. 
and instead of adding 360n, we're going to add 180n. So we combine those two equations to 1. There may be some cases where you can do this with other functions, but it's usually, it's usually only done with the tangent and cotangent functions. So let's try another one of these. We're told that cotangent theta is equal to negative root 3, which we can write as root 3 over 1, which we can write as x root 3 over x. And this corresponds to a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. And the adjacent side of the reference angle is x root 3, which means that our reference angle must be 30 degrees. So we write four 30 degree uh, reference angles in the corresponding reference triangles. Um, and we ask if we divide the yellow adjacent side by the blue opposite side, opposite the reference angle, and adjacent the reference angle. If we divide the yellow side length by the blue side length, which one of these triangles is going to give us a negative root 3? We need a negative number. And if you said, um, if you said the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant, the triangles in the second and the fourth quadrant, you're correct. So here and here. And again, we only have to write one equation when you're dealing with tangent and cotangent. Whenever your solutions skip quadrants, if you're going from quadrant 2 to quadrant 4, you're skipping a quadrant, uh, you only have to write one equation. So here we have 150 degrees, and here we have... 330 degrees, but let's start with 150, and we'll just add multiples of 180. Again, when you're skipping quadrants using a tangent and cotangent function, oftentimes you can just add multiples of 180. So in the next problems, you're just going to add multiples of 180. Um, go ahead and try number nine, and when you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. So we're told that tangent theta is equal to root three, which we can write as root three over one, or x root three over x. We recognize this as a, the ratio of the sides of a special triangle and tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent. So if x is the adjacent side, that means 60 is the reference angle. Uh, if the opposite side is x root 3, of course, the side across or the angle across from it is 60. Again, it doesn't matter which side to use to uh, figure out the reference angle. So now we draw four triangles, and we ask if we divide the blue opposite side by the yellow adjacent side, which one of these scenarios gives us a positive root 3? We need a positive number. If we divide the blue length by the yellow length, which one of these scenarios gives us a positive number? And if you said uh, quadrant 1 and quadrant 3, you're correct. So quadrant 1 gives us an angle 60 degrees, but remember, we can just use one of those, those angles and just add multiples of 180. So if you got that one right, good. Now you might be wondering, 
is it wrong to write two equations? And the answer is no, it's not wrong. This would be 240 degrees. Uh, but it's just unnecessary. You're not going to see that in, in a textbook. You're only going to see one equation. Okay, so go ahead and try number 10. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So we're told that cotangent theta is equal to negative 1, which we can write as 1 over 1, which we can also write as negative x over x. So the adjacent side and the, and the opposite side of, of the, right, the angle in the right triangle, they're equal, which means it must be a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. So we create those triangles in the first, second, third, and fourth quadrants and ask ourselves if we divide the yellow adjacent side length by the opposite blue side length which one of these triangles is going to give us negative one a negative number if you divide the blue length by the yellow length which one of these triangles would give us a negative number if you said the second quadrant triangle and the fourth quadrant triangle you're correct so those triangles are going to help us find the answers. And this angle is 135. Typically, we use the smallest angle measure. But we could use this angle measure also. So let's write all the solutions. Theta is equal to 135 plus 180n. Again, we only need one equation in some of these tangent problems and cotangent problems. So if you got that one right, good. OK. So now we're going to go to problems where we need to use a calculator. And you want to make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. So if you have an iPhone, you want to open your calculator app that is installed on the, on the phone from the factory. Rotate your phone so it's in landscape mode. And at the bottom left, there should be a button that says RAD. If there's a button that says RAD, that means you're in degree mode. Now, RAD stands for radians, which is not degrees. But if the button says RAD, that means you push that button to go to radian mode. So if it says RAD, that means you're actually in degree mode. If the button at the bottom left says DEG, degree, that means you're in radian mode. So it's the opposite of what you would think. It's very confusing. Um, if you have a uh, Texas Instruments 84 plus, TI 84 plus, then you want to push the mode button at the uh, upper middle and use the arrows to go down and make sure you're in degrees push enter on degrees and then you can push the second blue button and then the quit button which is the same as the mode button if you push second and quit you can go out of that screen so here we have the same exact problems that we just did except we're finding uh, the solutions between 0 and 360 so we're not finding all of the solutions just the solutions between 0 and 360. Again, there's an infinite number of solutions. But we're just going to find those solutions in this uh, interval here. The difference with these problems is this ratio is, is not, a, uh, it doesn't correspond to a 45 45 90 triangle or a 30 60 90 triangle. This is not a, a ratio that we recognize which means that we cannot find the angle. We can't do it. 
unless we have a calculator. So the question is, what do we tell the calculator? What buttons do we push? Well, if you have a graphing calculator, you're going to push the cosine inverse button. So you're going to push the blue second button on a TI-84+. Plus. Again, it's different for other graphing calculators, but the most popular calculator is the TI-84+. Plus. You're going to push the blue second button at the upper left, and then you're going to push the cosine button, but when you press it, it's going to say cosine inverse, because you push the blue button first. Then you're going to enter uh, 2 over 3. Then you're going to uh, press enter at the bottom right, and we get approximately 48.2 degrees. Now, if you're using an iPhone, you want to enter 2 divided by 3, and then you can press equals, and you should get a number 0.666666, and then you uh, press the uh, second button at the upper left and then the cosine negative one button in the, the, the bottom left, cosine negative one button. And you should get the, the same answer. Now it's very important to understand that this negative one does not mean one over cosine theta. Usually when you see a negative 1 in a superscript, that means to the negative 1 power. That's not what this means. This means cosine inverse. It doesn't mean the reciprocal of the cosine function. Now that's very confusing. Mathematicians will break their own rules when it comes to notation. Uh, but that's just a notation that... Uh, is used. You may also see the notation arc cosine 2 over 3. If your calculator says arc, that means the same thing. Uh, we're going to use this notation just so we can get used to it and we don't confuse it with the power, uh, the, uh, the negative 1 power. So if you want to find the angle in a calculator, you have to use this cosine inverse notation. That's the button that you see on your calculator. So now that number represents the reference angle. So I have some triangles here. I have a triangle in the first quadrant, and the reference angle has to be 48.2, and I'm just rounding off. And the reference angle over here is 48.2. And down here it's 48.2. And over here it's 48.2. So that is a very useful number that the calculator gave us. Uh, but cosine theta, it tells us up here, is equal to positive 2 thirds. So cosine is the adjacent side, the yellow adjacent side divided by the green hypotenuse. So which one of these triangles is going to give us a positive number, positive two-thirds, if we divide the yellow length by the green length? Which one of these triangles is going to give us a positive number if we divide the yellow length by the green length? And the answer is the upper right triangle and the bottom right triangle. Quadrant 1 and quadrant Four. So that reference angle is a solution, and I guess we can just write the answers up here, but we need to find this angle also. What is that angle? Well, we just subtract 48.2 from 360, and we get 311.8.
So we're only supposed to find the angles between 0 and 360. So we have 48.2 and 311.8. And those are the solutions. So we're doing the exact same thing that we did in the previous problems, but now we have to use our calculator. So um, let's try another one of these problems. So we need to find theta between 0 and 360, but this ratio, which is 6 over 1, we don't really recognize. It doesn't correspond to a 45-45-90 triangle or a 30-60-90 triangle. So we can't find theta unless we have a calculator. Theta is equal to tangent inverse of 6. So again, if you're using a TI-84 plus or any TI graphing calculator, you press the blue uh, second button and then the tan button. And because we push the blue button first, it has tangent negative 1, meaning tangent inverse. Then we enter 6 and press the enter button at the bottom right and we get 80.5 degrees approximately. And if you're using an iPhone, again, you first enter 6, and then you push the second button and the tangent inverse button. But you have to be in landscape mode in order to do that. OK. So that is the reference angle. So I'm going to now write that reference angle in all these triangles just so we can get a feel. Now you notice that this angle here is not an 80.5 degree angle. That angle should be bigger. It should be something like this. But we don't really care. The purpose is just to get the idea uh, of what where the angle is going to terminate, where it's going to stop. The first, second, third, or fourth quadrants. So I'm just going to write these reference angles here. Again, these triangles are just reference triangles. They're showing us what's occurring. We don't need to have the exact same, the exact uh, angle that we need uh, in terms of the geometry. So tangent is defined as the blue opposite side length divided by the yellow adjacent side length. So if you divide the blue side length by the yellow side length, which one of these triangles will give you a positive 6, a positive number? The blue length divided by the yellow length, which one will give you a positive number? And the answer is uh, the upper right triangle, which is the first quadrant triangle, and the third quadrant triangle. So 80.5 is one of the solutions. But this is a solution also. So we need to figure out what this angle is. To do that, we add 80.5 with 180, and we get 260.5. So 260.5 is also a solution. Again, we're looking for the solutions between 0 and 360. Okay, so now it's time for you to try a problem on your own. We need to find the angles between 0 and 360 that produce this ratio when you plug them into this sine function. Problem is, this is not a recognizable ratio, so you need to be able to tell your calculator how to find the angles and it'll only give you one answer 
So you need to enter this into your calculator, and that's going to be your reference angle. So try number 13. And when you come back, we'll do it together. OK, we're back. So if we enter this into the calculator, we get 17.45. Uh, I'm just going to round off to 17.46. If you round it off a little a little more, that's okay. So that's the reference angle for all these triangles. And again, I know that the angle in the triangle isn't actually 17.46, but we don't really care. We're just using these triangles to help us understand the, uh, the different uh, scenarios. Now, sine is defined as the blue opposite side divided by the green hypotenuse. So if you divide the blue opposite side length by the green hypotenuse length, which one of these is going to give you a uh, positive number, a positive 3 tenths? And the answer is the, the top two triangles. Uh, the triangle in quadrant 1 and the triangle in quadrant 2. And so 17.46 is one of our solutions. That's the quadrant 1 solution. But we also have a quadrant 2 solution that we need to find. And to do that, we need to determine the measure of this angle here. That's the actual measure of the angle if it terminates in quadrant 2. So we're going to subtract 17.46 from 180 and we get 162.54 degrees. 162.54 degrees. So as you can see, your calculator doesn't give you all the solutions you're looking for. It only gives you one. And what we're going to find out is that sometimes the calculator doesn't give you any solution that you're looking for. You have to modify the number that it gives you. Now this may look familiar, but uh, if cosine or if uh, cosecant or secant were equal to 2, then we'd have a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. But if tangent is equal to 2, we don't have uh, a special right triangle. So you're going to have to use the calculator for number 14. So try number 14, and when you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. So we need to use the calculator. And the calculator says that the degree measure is going to be approximately 63.4 degrees. So that's the reference angle in all these triangles. And then we need to ask, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if you divide the blue opposite side length by the yellow adjacent side length, which one of these triangles is going to give us a positive 2, a positive number? If you divide the blue side length by the yellow side length, which one of these triangles is going to give us a positive number? And the answer is the uh, upper right triangle and the lower left triangle. The quadrant 1 triangle and the quadrant 3 triangle. Now 63.4 is already, you know, we already wrote that solution, but we need to find the solution that corresponds to this triangle. That's this angle here. So we add 63.4 to 180 
and we get 243.43. So we can add that to our solutions. All right, so if you got that one right, good job. So now, let's do number 15 together. Something different is going to happen with this problem. You'll see what what occurs. So we're trying to find theta that makes this equation true, but this is not a, a recognizable uh, ratio, so we have to use the calculator to find theta. And that's what we're going to enter into the calculator. So sine inverse, negative 0.4 and we get negative 23.6. Uh, we'll just round off to 23.6 degrees. Now some calculators will give you a negative number and some will give you a positive. So your calculator might give you a positive number, but just be aware that the TI-84 Plus will most likely give you a negative number. And the iPhone will give you uh, it will give you a negative number also most likely now again it's possible it may give you a positive number but uh, Texas Instruments calculators are usually programmed to give you a negative number so this is actually not an answer that we're looking for because we're asked to find theta measures between 0 and 360 degrees. This is not between 0 and 360 degrees. That's a negative number. If you were to draw a number line and this is 0 and this is 360, we're supposed to find solutions in the green, but our solution was somewhere over here in negative 23 negative 23.6 that's to the left of zero so that's not one of our solutions but it is our uh, our reference angle so I'm going to write 23.6 degrees in all these triangles I don't really have to write it to use all these triangles because only two of them are going to produce the uh, answers that we're looking for and I'm going to ask if you divide the opposite side the opposite blue side because sine is defined to be the opposite side length divided by the hypotenuse if you divide the opposite side length by the green hypotenuse length which one of these triangles will give you a negative number because we need negative 0.4 if you divide the blue opposite side length by the green opposite or the green hypotenuse side length which one of these triangles will give you a negative number and the answer is the bottom two triangles the triangle in quadrant three and the triangle in quadrant four so what that means is we're looking for this angle and this angle so the big question that we need to ask is again why did the calculator give us a negative number when trying to find an angle in a trigonometric equation we've never gotten a negative angle measure so why did our calculator give us an, a negative angle measure well your calculator is programmed to find the solution that is closest to zero degrees. Uh, this solution over here, uh, let's calculate these numbers. So in the third quadrant, our answer is going to be 180 plus 
So 203.6. degrees and in the fourth quadrant our answer is going to be 336.4 degrees so your calculator is is oftentimes not not every calculator but many calculators are programmed to find the angle measure that is closest to zero these angles are 203.6 and 336.4 but if you look at this solution in the fourth quadrant, isn't it true that instead of rotating positive 336.4 to get to uh, this terminal side, you could also find a coterminal angle that is negative 23.6. Instead of rotating counterclockwise in the positive direction, you could rotate clockwise in the negative direction and get to this terminal side. That's negative 23.6. So that's why the calculator gave us negative 23.6. It wants the solution that's closest to zero degrees. So that number helped us. It helped us to find the reference angle, but it didn't help us to find, it, it, it didn't find the, the angles we're looking for directly. We don't want negative 23.6 rotating in the clockwise direction. We want positive 336.4 in the counterclockwise direction because these numbers are between 0 and 360. So just be aware that sometimes your calculator will deceive you. So this is not an answer. I'm going to write a slash through that. I mean, technically it's an answer, but it's not an answer that we're looking for. So I'm going to write theta is approximately equal to 203.6 degrees and also 336.4 degrees. So those are the two solutions because we're looking for solutions between 0 and 360. So again, just be aware that your calculator might try to fool you. For number 16, your calculator is going to try to fool you and give you a negative angle measure. That negative angle measure will be the reference angle, but it will not be an angle measure that uh, is a solution to this problem because we need measures between 0 and 360. So try number 16. Uh, you're going to enter, again, this is not a recognizable uh, ratio, so you're going to enter tangent inverse, negative 2.4, and that's going to give you a negative angle measure. You have to deal with the negative number. You have to use that negative number to help us find the numbers that we're looking for. So try number 16. When you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. So tangent inverse of negative 2.4 is equal to negative 67.4. Negative 67.4 degrees. You can round up to 2.4. But again, this is not a solution. That helps us uh, to find the solution. So that, that's the reference angle, 60. 7.4, I'm going to write the reference angle in each one of these triangles. We don't really have to write the reference angle in every triangle, but I just want you to see that that is the reference angle that we are, cons are uh, centering everything around. So now we have to ask, if you, div if you uh, uh, tangent is defined as the opposite side length, the blue opposite divided by the yellow adjacent. If you divide the blue opposite side length by the yellow adjacent side length, which one of these triangles will give you a negative 2.4? Negative number. We want a negative number. If you divide the blue opposite side length by the yellow opposite side length, which one of these triangles will give you a negative number? And if you said the upper left triangle and the bottom right triangle, you're correct. 
So this triangle and this triangle. So we need to ask, what is uh, this angle? Well, we just subtract 67.4 from 180, and we get 112.6 degrees. And over here, we subtract 67.4 from 360 and we get 292.6 292.6 degrees so those are our two solutions so our calculator gave us a number that was not a solution but that number helped us to find the solutions. So theta is approximately equal to 112.6 degrees and 292.6 degrees. So if you got those answers, good job. So the moral of the story is that your calculator can deceive you. Now again, why does the calculator give us a negative number? because your calculator, most calculators, not every calculator, but most calculators are programmed to find the solutions that are closest to zero degrees. Negative 67.4 rotating clockwise will give you this uh, reference triangle in quadrant four. If you rotate negative 67.4 in the clockwise direction. If you rotate in the positive direction, 292.6 will also give you this reference angle uh, in the fourth quadrant, but this number is much further away from zero degrees than negative 67.4. And this number is much further away from zero degrees than negative 67.4. Again, if you rotate in the clockwise direction, this angle is much closer to zero degrees than this angle. So that's why your calculator gives you a negative number. So these next problems will show us uh, the only situations where your calculator will actually give you a number that is not the reference angle. Um, again, it all depends on how your calculator is programmed, but most calculators in this case will give you an angle measure that is not uh, uh, the, the reference angle for the triangles. So again, this ratio we don't recognize as a 45-45-90 ratio or a 30-60-90. So that means we have to use the calculator. And by the way, this situation only occurs when it's cosine or secant and the ratio is negative. When it's cosine or secant is the function and the ratio is negative. So now, let's use the calculator. Uh, cosine inverse of negative 4 over 11 is equal to 111.3. So there you go. That is not the reference angle. That is one of the solutions between 0 and 360, but it's not the reference angle. So the reason that this is a problem, well, first of all, it's, it's not a problem in the sense that we already have one of the solutions. So that's the second quadrant solution. The problem is that we don't know the reference angle. So how do we find the other answer between 0 and 360? But of course, it's not hard to find the reference angle. We just go over here and subtract 111.3 from 180, and we get 68 point, uh, we can round off to 68, 68.7 degrees. 
so now we can use that reference angle to find the other uh, the other answer that we're looking for but we have to uh, determine which one of these scenarios will give us a negative cosine value so cosine is the adjacent side the yellow adjacent side divided by the green hypotenuse so which one of these we know this one up here at the upper left is already going to work. But which one of the other triangles, if you divide the yellow adjacent by the green hypotenuse side, you'll get a negative number, negative 4 elevenths. And if you said the triangle at the bottom left, you're correct. So we have the reference angle. We, we calculated that up here. That's 68.7. And uh, we need to find the actual angle that terminates in the third quadrant. So we just add 68.7 to 180. And we get 248.7. 248.7 degrees. So that is the other answer, 248.7 degrees. Now, let's discuss why your calculator in this situation did not give you the reference angle. In this situation, our solutions were angles that terminated in the second quadrant and the third quadrant. Uh, but why is it that our calculators did not give us the actual reference angle? Well, that's because uh, there's no solution, obviously, and that uh, there's no angle that terminates in the first quadrant that gives us a a solution. But there's also no angle in the fourth quadrant, whether it be positive or negative. Uh, that uh, satisfies this equation. So the only solutions are in the second and the third quadrant, or the, the, the angles terminate in the second or third quadrant. So the calculator cannot give you the reference angle because it's not an acute angle uh, in the first or fourth quadrants. So I know that that's a lot to take in. That's kind of confusing. But just be aware that sometimes your calculator can deceive you. So you're going to do problem number 18 so use a calculator to find the solution and when you when you do that you're going to discover that the the angle measure that the calculator gives you is not the reference angle it's going to be an obtuse angle so try number 18 and when you come back we'll do it together okay we're back so this ratio we don't recognize so we're going to have to use the calculator and the calculator tells us that the solution is 152.7 approximately 152.7 degrees so the good news is that we have one of the solutions it's in the second uh, it terminates in the second quadrant so 152.7 degrees. Problem is, if cosine is negative, we have another solution down here in the, in the uh, third quadrant. But to figure that out, we just need to calculate the reference angle. So we're going to subtract that number from 180, and we get 27, approximately 27.3. I'm just going to round off to 27.3. So that means the reference angle down here is 27.3 degrees. So if you want to find the actual angle that terminates in the third quadrant, we just add 27.3 to 180, and we get 207.3 degrees. So that's the other solution. OK, so again, the reason it didn't give us 
the reference angle is because there is no solution in the first or fourth quadrants regardless of the sign positive or negative uh, so when there was a solution in the fourth quadrant our calculators will give us a negative number or if, our, if we had a solution in the, in the first quadrant the calculator would give us a positive number but both those numbers would be the reference angles if you could uh, just assume that the negative angle just turned into a positive but in this case there were no solutions in the fourth or second whether positive or negative so the calculator had to give us the second quadrant solution which is closest to zero degrees okay so uh, in the previous problems we solved these equations and we were given ratios that corresponded to 45 45 90 triangles and 30 60 90 triangles so we didn't need to use a calculator we were also given uh, ratios where we had to use the calculator and you can always use the calculator for any ratio but in trigonometry class you're required to determine the values of uh, certain angles angle measures without using a calculator that's the the most important part of a, a trigonometry course and you can do that here also but we don't need to because this represents a collapsed triangle when when sine theta is equal to one that's when the triangle collapses remember so if you rotate let's say you start with theta so theta is this let's say theta is this green angle and then theta gets bigger let's say theta grows to this angle and you can see what's happening the triangle is actually collapsing when theta gets really really close to 90 degrees for all intents and purposes the triangle just collapses so theta is really close to 90 degrees so when you have a collapsed triangle the sine uh, the, the value of the sine theta actually approaches 1 so when it actually e when we uh, set the sine function equal to 1 we just define theta as 90 degrees but that's very difficult to visualize uh, it's very difficult to visualize collapsed triangles when you have quadrantal angles that's just a fancy word that means angles measures that are multiples of 90 or possibly 0 when you have quadrantal angles like 180, 270, 360, 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180, so on, so on and so forth. When you have quadrantal angles, it's, it's easiest to use the sine curve and the cosine curve if you graph the uh, angle, the angle measures versus the ratios so in this example the ratio the y value of the graph is the opposite side length of a right triangle divided by the hypotenuse and you can see that that ratio goes between one and negative one so the question is uh, if sine theta is equal to one what is theta so what that tells us is if the y value of the points on this red curve are equal to 1 what is what are the theta values so look on this red curve and ask yourself are there any points on the red curve that have y values of 1 and the answer is yes right here and right here and over here I should use a color that stands out more so I'm going to use let's use purple here here and here the y value of those points is one so those are all uh, gonna give us solutions so what are the x values 
when the y values are 1 on these points, what are the x values? Well, over here, we have uh, 90 degrees. Over here, we have 450 degrees. And over here, we have negative 270 degrees. But our solutions have to be between 0 and 360. So 90 degrees is the only solution that we're looking for. So the answer is 90 degrees. So pretty easy. Um, let's try this problem here. Secant theta is equal to 1. So what theta values correspond? Well, if the, if the y values, well, just ask yourself, what, which points on the red curve have y values of 1? And remember, these dotted lines are asymptotes. The dotted yellow lines are not part of the actual graph. Only the red curve is part of the graph. So we have these blue points here where the y values are 1. So the first blue point at the left it corresponds to uh, the x value is 0 degrees. And over at the right, the x value is 360 degrees. 360, 0 degrees. But look up here, 0 uh, is not going to be an answer because theta uh, is, needs to be between 0 and 360, but not equal to 0. Our solution can be 360, though, because it says less than or equal to. So the answer is 360 degrees. So we already did these problems, but we're just going backwards in this case. So if tangent theta is equal to 0, then what is theta? What that means is if uh, it's asking what points on this red curve have y values of 0? And the answer is this purple point here, and this purple point here, and this purple point. This, these points all have y values of 0, because they're on the x-axis. But we need values that are between 0 and 360. So that's going to be these two points here, actually just just this point, 180 and 360. Again, 0, we're not allowed to use that as a solution. So 180 and 360. All right, so why don't you go ahead and try number 22. Which point on the graph has a y value of 0? which point on the red graph has a y value of 0, then find the corresponding angle. When you come back, we'll do it together. OK, we're back. These points have y values of 0. But we're only allowed to use the points that give us angle measures between 0 and 360. So that's going to be these two points here. So those points have y values of 0, and the corresponding angles are 90 and 270. So theta is equal to 90 degrees and 270 degrees. If you got that right, good. OK, try number 23. When you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So, so which points on the curve have y values of negative 1? If you said this point and this point, you're correct. So what angle measures do those correspond to? Where this one has a negative 90 angle measure. That doesn't count. Uh, but this point over here has an angle measure of 270. The x value is 270. So theta is equal to 270 degrees. Have you got that right? Perfect. OK, go ahead and try number 24. Uh, which points on the red graph have y values that are equal to 0? When you come back, we'll do it together. OK, we're back. 
So this point and this point have y values that are 0. So um, those points have x values that are 90 and 270. 90 degrees and 270. So if you got that right, excellent. So now we're going to find all of the solutions that correspond to equations, or all the solutions of the these types of equations. So let's find all the points on the red curve whose y values are equal to 1. That would be this point here and this point. But remember, this curve goes uh, forever to the right and forever, forever to the left. There's an infinite number of values that satisfy this equation. And notice that there's 360 degrees between the points whose y values have uh, values of 1. So that means that theta can be equal to 0 degrees because this point has an x value of 0 degrees. But we can add multiples of 360. So we can actually just get rid of the 0 and write 360n. And of course, n is any integer. OK, so those are all the solutions to that equation. Let's try another one. Let's find all the points on the red curve whose y values are equal to 1. That would be this point, this point, and this point. And you can see that those points are 1, 2, 3, 4, 360 degrees apart. So again, the answer is going to be uh, wherever we're going to start at. And we can start with 90 degrees, because this point here has an x value of 90 degrees. So we'll start at 90 degrees and add multiples of 360. And n, of course, is any integer. OK, let's try another one of these before you try one on your own. So we want to find all the points on the red curve whose y values are equal to 0, and that's these purple points here. And you can see that those uh, angles are just multiples of 180. We're starting at 0 degrees. So we can just say that theta is equal to 180n. n is any integer. OK. So I want you to try number 28. Find all the points on the red curve whose y values are equal to negative 1. And then describe the, the angles using an equation. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So these points have y values that are equal to negative 1. And you could start with 270, but I'm going to start with the value that's closest to 0. So I'm going to start with uh, negative 90 degrees, because that's the x value of this point here. And then I'm going to add, we see there's 360 degrees between uh, those points, so we're going to add multiples of 360, and that is your answer. If you said 270 plus 360n, that's fine, but uh, this works also. So if you got that right, good job. Okay, go ahead and try at number 29, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So these are the points on the graph whose 
y values are equal to negative 1 and the x values that correspond are negative 180 180 and uh, whatever that value is at the right so theta is equal to uh, 180 and we can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 360 degrees uh, each of those points are 360 degrees apart so we can say 180 degrees plus 360 n so if you got that answer good job all right all right so we have one last problem here find all the points on the red curve whose y values are equal to zero and then find the corresponding angles and write an equation that represents all of the angles try number 30 and when you come back we'll do it together <clears throat> alright we're back okay so these are all the points that uh, whose y values are zero so we have uh, let's start at 90 degrees and we're going to add 180 because there's 180 degrees between all these angles so we'll start at 90 and add multiples of 180 and there you go now you could say negative 90 and then add multiples of 180 that would be fine also if you got that right, good job. So that was the class today. If you'd like to take screenshots of all the work that we did to help you with your homework or to study for tests, go ahead and do that now. Here's screenshot number one. And screenshot number two. And number three. and number four number five and number six number seven number eight number nine number 10 number 11 number 12 and number 13 and number 14 but don't go before you get your homework here's the homework assignment your screenshot number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. number seven and number eight but don't go before you get your uh, answers it's not enough just to attempt the homework you must do it correctly so here's the answers remember if you don't do that homework it's a hundred percent guarantee you're gonna learn absolutely nothing in this entire course so get that homework done completely correctly neatly and keep it in order in your binder and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next class.